Okay, so I'm not going to start this story off by saying who this person is because once I say that, anyone who knows who this is will get it right away, but I think it's funnier if I don't say who it is right off the bat. So, you know, the, the Federation had, TWF had been around, I'd say about 25 or 26 years at that point. We, we hadn't really developed, like I said in, in an earlier interview, quite a, quite a reputation with um, a very small, you know, maybe five people, but very, very loyal, you know, I'm, um, they, they would sometimes acknowledge me on the street, they, they would, they told me sometimes when they were flipping through the channels and they happened to catch TWF or it was beyond, they'd stop and they'd look at it and then they'd smile and they'd go, Look how stupid this is, and then they turn the channel. But I mean, that was a lot better than we were getting before. We couldn't even get anyone to even stop for that split second. The, re the, the reason why I'm starting off with this is, is just because I'm just trying to establish that we were a very established federation at that point. And um, so, you know, we've gotten used to things being a certain way, you know, a level of professionalism. Um, you know, I mean, from the top to the bottom, from the commissioner, you know, Jeffrey Buchanan, and um, well, oh, Colonel Lynch, of course. You know, I don't even think of Colonel Lynch as a commissioner. He's more of uh, a, a, um, the godfather of the TWF. I mean, he, he, he's the one that really started it all back in uh, 1980, what, 1983 or 84. Oh, no, sorry, no, no, that was when... That was when that gentleman had showed up. Man, it's been almost 50 years now. So, geez, he was... Oh, I'm not going to do that. Obviously, I can't do math right now. So, anyway, um, so we had this level of professionalism from top to bottom. So, like I'm saying, from commissioner to the lowliest wrestler. And even our, even our referees had a level of professionalism that was the envy of probably of of no one was really envious but they were they were excellent and um, so one day we're we're doing a taping at uh, Dino Bravo Dino Bravo Memorial Ring and you know we got a match going on it's uh, who was it, it was Bloodsucker versus um, who was it Bloodsucker versus Ranger Chubb and and Bloodsucker had him down for his fin had Ranger Chubb down for his finishing move. He's about to uh, bite him and suck his blood out, which is I still don't know how that was quite legal. All of a sudden, out of the blue, at the at the highest point in the match, and everyone will know who who I'm talking about when I say this. All of a sudden, out of the blue, as at the in, a, in an extremely loud voice that broke the tension that was going on in the ring. All you hear is, boy, my balls really itch. Hey, does anyone have an Olympia? And all of a sudden, turn and look, and there he is, the mad ref. <laughs> now everyone doesn't know who I'm talking about when I say that, but I just wanted to sort of give it a background on, you know, Matt Ref really created a reputation for himself, but surprisingly, you know, he, I guess it's not surprisingly, he, but he really brought a, a, a serious change in the mentality of TWF by him showing up, you know. Professionalism went out the window. Um, it, it, it came all about satisfying, you know, everyone's, you know, um, you know, child's urges, you know, so everyone started, you know, tickling each other all the time, and, and um, you know, but this was all Nick's doing, because see, Nick, that's how Nick operates, and um, no, I'm, I'm overstating it, no, no, no one was going around tickling each other or anything like that, but he was so disruptive that, you know, people did start not really focusing on what they were doing, you know, they, you know, people would be in the middle of doing something, and Nick would just, you know, show up and start saying, oh no, the Emperor of Japan has, has surrendered, you know, it's like, 
for no reason, or he'd start singing Oklahoma, and he was uncontrollable. You know, we'd tell him, hey, Nick, I mean, hey, Mad Ref, you got to stop this. I mean, you're ruining the show. And then when the things would get interrupted, you know, people would be like, well, screw it, I'm just going to go do something else. And that's, again, where Nick caused real problems, because Nick would always bring a 12-er of Olympia, a bottle of... What was it? The orange liqueur. <laughs> well, the orange liqueur, you guys will know it. Uh, Grand Marnier. A bottle of, of, what was the other thing you'd always have? A bottle of, a bottle of something else, and for sure a bottle of Ouzo. So, you know, we, you know, like I said, so it was a two step process. The mad ref would show up and interrupt something. The wrestlers would say, well, screw it. I'm going to go do something else. Being the alcoholics that most of us were at the time, you know, including the, a lot of the, the kids that were on the show, I mean, uh, we weren't their parents. If they, needed, if they felt the need to drink, that was up to them, you know. And so they would wander into the kitchen. They'd open up the fridge, and they'd see that 12-pack of, of Olympia. They'd see the bottles of Grand Marnier, and it was all on the, on the counter. And before you knew it, all the wrestlers are drunk. And, you know, the only thing that's even filmable is, is Nick acting like a goddamn lunatic, you know. So he ended up taking up a lot more of the show just by virtue of him being such a nuisance. And it really set the Federation back for a number of years, you know. Uh, you know. Poor Colonel Lynch, you know, I mean, he was he was no longer the commissioner at that point, but, it, you know, to, for him to see what he had built turned into that. And, it, you know, it wasn't all Jeffrey Buchanan's fault. He tried, but, man, that the mad ref, you just can't get rid of him. You know, if he shows up somewhere, he, he's you can't get rid of him. He's going to stick around, and he's going he's gonna to get everyone drunk. And he's probably going to also, if, if there are any uh, women around, he's going to irritate them until they actually leave. So then it's just, it's a bunch of, it would, like I said, it would just turn into a bunch of wrestlers sitting around drunk, watching Nick act like a lunatic. And, yeah, so for a while there, we still had matches, but they were just, they were awful because everyone was like, hung over and they just knew that in the middle of their match the mad ref was going to pop up out of nowhere and start screaming or telling a railroad story or like I said itching his balls or his feet like in the middle of the ring like what are you doing here oh my balls itch oh I gotta itch my balls like okay well why you gotta do it right here in the middle of the ring and then you know he he would never leave. He, I mean, the studios at Dino Bravo Ring, you know, his family is, what, third generation Tracy. Uh, he's got houses all over, all over town that he could go hang out at. And yet, he would never leave except to go eat lunch with his Uncle Tom. That's it. So he could get some money to buy the... Olympia and the Grand Marnier and the Uzo. And then, you know, he started recruiting people to go out to the bar with him. And they'd come back and tell stories of how, like, Nick passed out in his car with a hooker who, who didn't end up doing anything but just stole his wallet after he passed out. You know, another time I was actually there, we went to the, we went to the Shamrock, we walk in, and immediately the bartender just gives the dirtiest look to all of us because we're standing with Nick. I don't know what Nick had done, but he had obviously done something to irritate that guy. I mean, that's a that was a common occurrence. This guy was just persona non grata all over town. And his association with DWF, you know, it made it difficult for the rest of us. And so... Um, you know, honestly, I'm not really sure what finally 
made the you know change because the federation really did get back on track, but you know I, that's a good question. What, what was it? Probably because you know the the operations moved up to Sacramento later on, and yeah, he did go up there for a while, but he did have to drive, and so I sort of kept him away, and that gave you know that gave the 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 brain trust of. TWF and a, the, the space they needed to reassert the wrestlers' dominance in the TWF, and so um, but yeah, so I, I have a lot more stories of Mad Ref. I will be telling the stories of the Mad Ref uh, coming up shortly, or more of them. And and but I, I just wanted to set the groundwork for this guy, or or set the sort of give some background. Because, I mean, he really was a pivotal person in the history of the TWF, well, for sure.